required for the replication process in the data model. Now let us talk about the replication of T4. Once after they achieved, uh, they, they hijacked the machinery of host cell and they start to make early proteins and late early proteins or middle proteins. In this kind of condition, they need to duplicate their genome. Otherwise, they won't package something, right? Because for the packaging, they require genome as well as uh, the structural parts. They may produce structural parts from the previously produced mRNA transcripts, but for the packaging of the DNA, they require to produce this genome. Now, the T4 DNA replication requires several viral coded proteins. One is T4 DNA polymerase, primase, helicase, and recombination exonuclease, single strand binding protein, etc. Now, the T4 DNA replicates in two phases. One is other, which is called the first phase of replication. Then you'll be seeing the second phase of replication, which is slightly modified. In the first phase of replication, it begins at multiple origin, just like a formation of replication fork or replication bubble, which will migrate to both these directions and finally they will meet at a particular location. So that's how they can begin this process. But during this process, they encounter a problem. Now what is the problem? If we are talking about linear DNA in that case, if we are talking about linear DNA just like the DNA of T4 virus, now in this case, as the DNA is linear, each time when they are adding primer at the terminal ends and they start synthesizing all the DNA in both the strands, usually in, in the opposite or lagging strand, we need to add primers, right, for the synthesis because the DNA polymerase can only synthesize from 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So here in this picture, we can see it, red things are the primers that are being added. After the addition of primer, then rest of the nucleotides are being added by the DNA polymerase and the polymerization is going on. But what is a problem is that each time after the synthesis is complete, they need to remove this DNA primer because the primer is made up with RNA. So I must call it RNA primer except for DNA primer because it is made up with RNA or ribonucleotide segments. So this RNA must be removed from this DNA, total DNA backbone. So for that reason, after the synthesis, they need to chew these RNA strands apart. So if they chew these RNA strands apart, as a result of that, what we get, we get a terminal gap in both this case after each replication cycle. Now that creates the problem because if it is going on and on and on, just like what happens in case of eukaryotic chromosome, the end part is kind of getting lost each time it takes a replication. So it is very, very difficult because the information is being lost, genes are going away, so they won't tolerate that. So to prevent that, what they can do, there are two different solutions for that. One type of viruses, some type of viruses just do it, uh, they make a concatimer formation. As a result of concatimer formation, what they can produce the cos side or cohesive ends, right? Just like <coughs> the lambda phase, they produces cohesive ends in that case, that case. So as they are making cohesive ends, they can easily circularize their DNA once they inject their DNA inside the host cell. That's, due to, that's in case of bacteriophage lambda. But in case of bacteriophage T4 and T7, how to remove that kind of condition? They can remove it via the formation of concatimers and again similarly by the formation of terminally redundant sequence. Now what do we mean by terminally redundant sequence? We have already talked it in a structure of genome of T4 phase in the previous video. <coughs> If you, if you remember or recall it, uh, the material, the terminal redundancy means at both the ends we are having same type of genes. Just let's begin with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And after the 6 gene, we are having again 1, 2, 3. Just so, so what we are having at the both the terminal, we are having same genes repeats in both these cases. So this kind of terminal redundancy can help them to, uh, to, to block this kind of gene loose effect. Now the second phase of replication is the genetic recombination that can proceed within the regions of terminal redundancy of two daughter molecules. And the second phase of replication is unique to T4 phase because in phase like lambda, they won't have any terminal redundancy in those cases because they just have the cos sites that is produced during the packaging of the phase DNA inside the head. But in this case, what we can see, in this case the terminal redundancy, as they are having the terminal redundancy, as you can see here, a, B, C, D, E, F, and then, uh, then again W, X, Y, Z. After the Z, again A, B, C, D. So it's, it's kind of continuous repeat of same sequences. And at the beginning and at the end, both this case, we are having same sequence A, B, C, A, B, C repeats. It may be repeated uh, for a thousand times. It may be repeated for 500 times. But it should be repeated in both these ways and correctly. 
Okay, so as they are having this kind of redundancy, they can kind of having a recombination between themselves. So as you can see, as they are having a recombination, we can attach two different gene segments like that. And this is important. This kind of recombination takes place during uh, the second phase of replication of T4 pass and it gives rise to molecular concatemers. So as they are giving rise to concatemers means a long stretch of DNA, long stretch of DNA having same sequences attached all the time. So that means this from A to this Z is a necessary gene for to be to be encoded and to be packaged inside a head and from this A to this Z again is ready to be packaged in another head. So they are forming this kind of long similarly attached genome, multiple attached genome attachment. So then they will cleave this each genome and they will package this genome inside the host cell or inside not host cell inside the bacteriophage head. Okay. <clears throat> So here we can see the recombination, which depend uh, dependent and uh, replication dependent uh, upon the recombination. Now in this case, <coughs> there are two mo models. One is the bubble migration synthesis model. Another one is the Mosin model of T4 replication recombination or uh, terminal redundancy using terminal redundancy. Now in this case, we can see that this is a strand and this is another, which is having a kind of deleted part, which is a newly synthesized. In this case, it will it will be strand invasion in the first place. After the invasion, it starts replicating in both the ends. After the replication is done, branch migration and holy and the result resolution of this holiday junction, and what we get is two different genes. But above all, in this both the genes, this thing is possible because they are having similar sequences in both this DNA. If they are having different sequences, this thing may not be possible. Right? In case of bubble migration system, in this case also, we can see strand invasion will be there, initiation of synthesis will be there, but synthesis will only occur in one particular part. It will occur in synthesizing at front and branch migrate at back. Right? So in both this case, synthesis will occur like that. After the synthesis is done, it continuously synthesizing the whole strand and it will be a part. And after that again, the other strand will invade and that will synthesize their own way. So that's how the two models are explaining how the recombination can take place during this second phase of 